Before we get into actually sculpting uh, more form, let's really take stock of what we've got here, because there's a lot of solid information in this sculpt, but it's all at a certain level. And that's one of the things that's going to be really important to remember, is that as a sculptor, you know, you're not getting in and refining that mouth first. That's not the way that we're doing this. You can, as a classical artist, you know, that see they might focus on drawing the eye and getting the eye the perfect size, but that's not the way I'm going to be teaching you. I'm going to be teaching you a more constructive approach. And remember, we're really looking at ZBrush from a sculptor's view here. So as a sculptor, we have very specific structural information in this face that I want to make sure you have in yours. So I'm going to start to delineate these guys. Okay, we have what we have the really fundamental breakdown of the front plane of the face. Okay, kind of coming up into this this shape. And that front plane of the face is working really clearly in connection with the side of the face. So you can see how these are really working nice and clean, right? We have that front view, boom, boom. There you go. Get that across, get this across. And then we have a clear distinction of the brow. Okay, let's just undo that. We have the overhang of the brow coming into the front plate of the face. That's really important. We also have the superorbital margin meeting the glabella, glabella and the superciliary arch. And we have that moving into the side of the nose, the top part of the nose, the front plane of the nose. We have that kind of clearly delineated. We have the muzzle of the mouth, which has then been broken into the dominance of the upper lid, subservience of the lower lid, and the clear kind of marionette. If you've ever seen the those old marionettes, that you'll really see this marionette line. And marionette line is a plastic surgeon term for that. Uh, it's something that they need to be removing as the fat in in us as we get older starts to accumulate right in here. We also have one really important thing that it's, I mean, I can't stress how important this is actually. And you'll see it in Bridgman drawings, but we go from the zygomatic in, then we go to the brow, then we go to the frontal eminence. So there's this, this descending arch, boom, boom, boom. So that super orbital margin and this little overhang. If I remember right, it's called, this little guy right here is called the external angular process of the frontal bone. And it's that, it's that point where the, it turns to the side, the front of the face turns to the side of the face, basically. And in most people, it's inset. In some people, and you'll notice it because their, uh, their foreheads just look a little different, in some people, that will actually be uh, matching. Uh, we can hit OK. It'll match the zygomatic. But that's a really, um, that's a really strong statement for those two things to really match up. It really affects our perception of the person. It's much more natural for it to be a little inclined. So we've got important structure in place. And what we want to do now, before we uh, go in and start to sculpt all of this beautiful form in the cheek and get the infraorbital triangle and really get the nodule separated from the labial, the inner portion of the labial fibers, get all of this kind of flowing, get that triangularis or depressor anguli, the mentalis, the masseter. You know, before we get all of that stuff, we have one feature that we're missing, and you know what that one is. It's the eyeball. So how do you put eyeballs in this beast? 
Well, let's take a look at that next.